In the past couple days, I spent a ton of time in Palia. This relaxing MMO quickly stole my heart because there is just so much to do. And yeah, since the open beta is just around the corner, I want to dedicate today to giving you guys some essential tips and tricks for your first days in the game. To share everything you need to know about different professions, improve relationships with NPCs, advanced farming and fishing information, and make a lot of money early game. This guide will basically cover it all so let's get right to it. Before we get started, I quickly want to say a huge thanks to everyone who recently joined the channel and for sharing the amazing positive feedback on my videos. You have no idea how happy this makes me as I do spend a lot of time working on my guides. That being said, it would be amazing if you can share your thoughts in the comments down below for this video and of course also leave a like if you find all the information here valuable. Anyways, without further ado, let's get started. If you're just getting started with Palia, the professions and their progression system can be a little bit overwhelming. If we open up our inventory, you can see your character with your currencies, your renown, your tools, which you unlock when doing different types of professions, but also the skill levels. And the nice thing is these don't only show the level itself, but they also show you the NPC, which you can interact with to unlock some new blueprints, new tools, basically upgrades for your character to make farming as efficient as possible. With a profession of level 10 or higher, you can start making a special currency, which allows you to purchase some pretty exclusive items at the vendors as well. At the moment, it's evening, so most of the NPCs are in town. So let's quickly check out where exactly we can find Zion, because this is the guy I want to talk to. If you click on him with your middle mouse button, you can basically mark him on your compass. So it's going to be even easier to find him. If we talk to Reth, you can see that this guy unlocks some pretty interesting recipes for cooking as well, which I totally recommend you to do. Anyways, since we are already in town, check out the general store, as this is another location where you can sell items. If you just click on them and press sell, you will instantly get the reward. So you don't have to wait for the items to be sold inside your base. Right here, you can also purchase backpack upgrades, which are going to make your farming adventures a lot more efficient. I currently have four out of the five backpack upgrades. The final one costs 50,000, which is pretty difficult to farm for, while I have a pretty efficient guide at the top right of the screen, which can easily make you 15,000 gold per hour. So definitely worth checking out. But let's move on to a very useful tool to find basically everything you need in Palia. I'll provide you with a link in the description, but this is what it looks like. A Palia interactive map on which you can choose which zone you want to farm on. So the first zone would be the Kalima village, just like the one we have in game. But the interactive map is so much more useful as this one allows you to find some pretty precious resources. For example, for the early game, you can find every single copper or node right here. If we quickly click on the foraging tab, you can see that spice sprouts needed for a couple quests can be found in the northwestern part of the region. For hunting Cernux, you definitely want to check out the Whispering Banks. For people who've been playing a little bit longer, the map for Bahari Bay even includes all different pallium ore nodes. So definitely interesting to check out if you want to quickly get your hands on this precious resource. Of course, you also want to know which zones are over farmed and definitely not worth checking out, for which I have another ultimate volume guide in the top right of the screen. Improving relationships with other NPCs or fulfilling their requests, as well as those of players, is also important in Palia, for which you can get your hands on a lot of renown, make everything in the game even more efficient. To do so, you basically want to open up the social tab, which I have in the bottom right of the screen. If we go to the request tab right here, you can see that we can basically request an item. If you request gifts yourself, be sure to choose items which you usually don't farm for or are simply pretty difficult to get your hands on. Requests will stay open for up to an hour and you can do this multiple times. On the secondary tab though, we also have fulfill requests. Right now, Lezio Salvatore is asking for iron bars and, and since I have a lot of those, I can just pick them up right here, go to the requests, check fulfill and click gift, gift, gift. There we go. You can see that we've made some progress on the Prove Your Generosity quest, and this will give us some renown in return. 
So definitely keep your eyes open to this tab. Keep fulfilling requests of other players. And yeah, if you want to encourage other people to request items, be sure to do that yourself as well. Right now, we're going to fulfill some requests for NPCs and improve our relationship with them. To do so, I definitely recommend you to pay Kalima Village a visit as there you will find most of them during the day. You can fulfill an NPC request every single day and to discover which item they're looking for, you basically want to click on this icon right here. Since I already did this for Ashura, we can find the information in our relationship tab, which can be found exactly right here. So if we look at Ashura, you can see that he has the grilled fish as weekly once. So we can prepare this in our base and then bring it to him. If we talk to him, you should always use the chat to improve your relationship. But now we can fulfill item requests and gift to improve the relationship. This also says a thumbs up. So if we click on it, he says, what a delicious looking catch. Voila, your relationship has increased friendly face. Sometimes the NPCs will even give you quests after improving your relationship with them, which is currently too. A little bit earlier, I also talked to Bedrew I found out he wants to have some potatoes. So I'm going to deliver them to him as well. Voila, helpful neighbor burr. <laughs> Funny thing is, in his own crop store, you can even find the potatoes. So keep your eyes on this. This is the exact location, only a little bit north of the Leaf Hopper Hills. So every time when you visit Kalima Village, be sure to check out all NPCs, talk to them and use the chat function to improve your relationship with them. Even though it doesn't feel like a huge difference, over time you will improve the relationship. Definitely worth doing so, as well as of course finding out which gifts they want to have. So this is a store of the city hall where you can find Ritz. If you purchase these, you can increase the size of your lands. I don't recommend you to do this early as the renown can be extremely valuable to upgrade your character to get more focus on your bar and also increase its bonus. If you already have a pretty big focus bar, you can, of course, spend some renown on this later game. But first, I recommend you to go to the Magis Hollow, the Dragon Shrine, or to the Phoenix Shrine, which you can find in the northern part of the map, where you basically had your introduction quests. All right, so here we are at the Dragon Shrine. If I open up my inventory, you can see that I currently have a focus bar with a total of 400 focus, and my focus bonus is 62.5%. If we commune with this one, we will basically increase our maximum focus by 50. So right now we have a total of 450. So yeah, I definitely recommend you to upgrade your focus bar as much as possible, as well as the bonus to make any type of farming in Palia as efficient as possible. Just like we found on the interactive map, right here in the mirror fields, we found spice sprouts. Another pretty interesting thing in Palia are rare or shiny bugs, which probably instantly remind you of Pokemon. You gotta catch them all, right? Anyways, these are pretty precious as well. So you want to keep your eyes open for shiny particles or blinking effects around you, because if you catch these, you can sell these for a pretty nice amount of gold, especially early in the game. Personally, I think catching bugs is easiest during the nighttime because then it's going to be so much easier to spot the shiny particles. So we just caught two regular spotted sting bugs with a total value of 28, 14 each, while the shiny or star quality can sell for 21. Even more interesting, the garden leaf hopper has a value of 49, while the star quality 73. So it's definitely worth checking out all these different bugs and try to catch the rare ones as much as possible. Talking about rare loot, you can also stumble upon rare creatures, Stripe Chapa as well as Elder Cernuk, which are a little bit more difficult to find, but are definitely worth taking out as they drop much more loot in comparison with their common variants. In the second zone, you can even stumble upon magic animals, which are even more difficult to find. I already made an ultimate hunting guide for these fellas, which you can find at the top right of the screen. But I can assure you, hunting for these can be a lot of fun and extremely rewarding. What I find amazing about Palia is that there are so many different ways to keep you occupied with pretty much any type of farming to make yourself a lot of money. And one of those, I think the most relaxing, is fishing. 
While fishing looks pretty simple at first, it goes so much further than you think, as we have lakes, rivers, ponds, and even cave fish which you can stumble upon on many different locations of the map. So it is definitely worth checking out every nook and cranny this game has to offer. It seems like rare fish pop up most frequently during the morning and evening time window in this game. If you want to switch lures by the way, you want to equip your fishing rod and then quickly tap the right mouse button to switch between your baits. To catch fish, you basically want to wait for the sound to pop up to hook it with your left mouse button. If you hold it, you will reel in the fish. And while doing this, you also want to make sure that you keep the bobber right in between the two bars, as then you can have a perfect catch, which results in getting more experience. In this case, I hooked a prism trout, which is a little bit more difficult to catch as they jump every now and then. In that case, you want to stop holding your hook button as otherwise your rod HP will go down. And if it goes all the way down, you will lose the catch. And yeah, in the distance we have a treasure chest. Sometimes this can be a little bit difficult to reach, while if you have a glider, it usually makes everything so much simpler. Treasure chests can be found all over Palia, so definitely want to keep your eyes open for these precious boxes, as not only do they contain loot, but can also be used to decorate your base. Every now and then you will also come across these boards, which are basically quick travels to get from A to B a lot faster. If we open up the map, you can see that in the top right of the screen, you also have this return home button, which is basically your hearthstone or recall to your base, which you can use every X amount of time as well. It's going to be available in one minute. So what we're going to do is just click on this board and press go home. All right, so here we are at my hobo paradise. I know there's still a lot of work to do right here, but I first wanted to push out a couple guides to get you guys started with the game. Anyways, a very helpful tip is to build three to five campfires, which is gonna make processing foods a lot easier. Just fill up every single campfire, and after you've done your tasks, you can pick up the meat. You can even do this 24 seven as the food will be processed before you know it, but this will get your cooking skill up in no time. Eating the food while cooking will also give you more focus, so that means bonus experience for your professions, definitely worth doing all the time, whatever you're doing in the game. You also want to know a little bit how the farming works, which is pretty simple, but can also be a little bit overwhelming at the beginning. The more you level up your gardening skill, the more blueprints and features you will unlock for your garden. In front of my hobo garden, I have two seed makers, which help me to process seeds for any type of vegetable I want to plant in my garden. But it's very important to look at which seeds you plant where. For example, potato seeds will help other crops stay hydrated, while if you use the cotton seeds, you can basically boost the quality of other nearby crops. So you want to have this in between other crops when they're growing to increase its quality. So then you can basically start farming all these quality tomatoes, as well as other plants like cotton, which can sell for a lot of money if you have them growing right next to each other. With carrot seeds, you can prevent weeds from going in your garden, but there are so many different ones. So if we want to keep all these plants hydrated right here, we basically want to place a potato plant right in the middle. I'm going to do the same right here while we also want to boost the quality. So you basically want to place a couple of cotton plants right in between the rest of them. Filling up your watering can can be done at this little pond right here. And I totally recommend you to upgrade this one as quick as possible to make the farming a lot less tedious as the first year only allows you to water one plant at a time, while the second upgrade allows you to water nine plants at the same time, which makes gardening, farming in general, a lot more fun and efficient. You can boost your plants with special fertilizers sold at the general store or made with glowworm farms, but these can be accessed a little bit later in the game. So now you're probably wondering, what do I do with all the veggies? Well, this is where your cooking station comes in. Once again, apologies for the cheap setup right here, but um, you basically want to first craft a stove, as this is where you will find all your dishes. The hearty vegetable soup is an amazing one to craft, as it's pretty easy on the resources. You will only need any type of vegetable, any spice, which you'll find during your adventures, and also a mushroom, of which I have over a hundred. You can also take quality ingredients right here, so it will use the quality ingredients which you've made with farming. But let's start off with the regular one. So if we press make right here, 
We first place the soup on the stove while it also has a timer. So you definitely want to make sure you finish this mini game in time. So now we have to prepare a chopped mushroom. A mini game pops up where we just simply have to click on the rhythm, slice the mushrooms. And after that, we can add the ingredients to the soup and do a little bit of stirring. Voila, now we are successful, made a hearty vegetable soup. So we're gonna pick this one up. I'm gonna make a second soup, and this time we're gonna use the quality ingredients. So if you press make, we're gonna do the exact same mini game. Look at that, this time we made a star quality item. A regular hearty vegetable soup will have a cell value of 23 and give you 100 focus points when consumed, while sometimes it can randomly become a star quality soup. So then it will sell for more and also have more focus points. If you decide to use star quality items, then by default, the value will be the highest and will also give you more focus points. So it's definitely worth considering to make high quality dishes as this will make boosting your focus a little bit easier. And yeah, another means of making a ton of money in Palia. So now you're probably wondering what exactly is the best way to make a ton of money if you are still fresh in the game, I totally recommend you to use my Cernic hunting guide, which you can find at the top right of the screen. It easily makes you 15,000 gold per hour. So it's a very efficient way. You can start using this method shortly after completing the tutorial. So it is totally worth your time. While if you want to level up fast in Palia, well, it's pretty straightforward that you always have to keep your tummy filled. Keep eating the snacks because then you will always have a full focus bar every time when you get other resources, mine ore, and of course, catch fish. Another amazing way to make a ton of money in Palia is glowworm fishing. This can be accessed a little bit further in the game after making a little bit of progression, but with specifically glowworms, you can catch high valuable fish, which can sell for a ton of gold. The blobfish, which I just caught, sells for 75, while the void ray for almost 400 gold. So definitely an interesting way to make a ton of money in a relaxing way. All right, so there you have it. A ton of essential tips which are gonna make your adventures in Palia so much easier. Pretty much everything you need to know as a beginner to get started off the right foot. Ladies and gentlemen, a big thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like if you found this video helpful. And yeah, if you think I should make a second part with more essential tips about Palia, do leave it in the comments down below. If you have more suggestions for the community, I love to hear as well. Anyways, you are very welcome on my Discord to further discuss everything related to Palia and to join our community in game. Right now it is 4am out. I want to wish you an awesome day. Have fun with the game. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.